Now this video is very lengthy, so this is why I decided to create multiple chapters for my video using YouTube annotations. To use this feature, just click on any of the chapters listed above and it will take you to that specific section in the video without having to watch the entire tutorial. What's up guys, Alex here with a beginner's guide on how to use the program Sony Vegas Pro 12 which was just released last week. Now I already made a beginner's tutorial for Vegas Pro 11 last year but it wasn't really well made so for all my current subscribers you don't have to watch this video but if you're new to the program make sure you watch this entire video if you want to learn how to use the program and how to edit a video as soon as possible. Now with my tutorials I like to keep them very short and concise and because of that some of them might be too fast so if you have any questions about any aspect of this video, uh, of this video feel free to ask me down in the comments down below. Either I or someone else who knows how to use Sony Vegas will hopefully answer your question. So without further ado, let's get started. To start off, I'm going to be explaining the basic interface of the program. So as you can see here, you have a gray color scheme as well as the same docking panels as the previous versions of Sony Vegas Pro. And I'm going to start with these little five tabs right here. So the project media tab is a place where you're going to store all the media files that you're using in your project right now. This includes uh, videos, images, as well as audio files. Next up, the explorer tab allows you to explore your computer's hard drive to search for files to use in your video. And the two tabs, transitions and video effects tabs are pretty self-explanatory and I'll get more in depth on them uh, when we actually start doing video editing later on in the video. Last but not least, we have the Media Generators tab, which stores all the graphical content as well as text animations provided by Sony. Next to these tabs, we have the Media Trimmer, and some people use this to actually edit their videos. Uh, some people, or actually most people, use the timeline to um, trim and edit their videos. Next up, we have the Video Preview, which of course allows you to view your video projects. Uh, there are some options here, like the Split Screen View, which allows you to um, say for an example you apply video effects to your video and you want to see a side-by-side -side comparison between the original video and the video with the video effect applied to it. So you just enable this to enable the split screen view and you can turn it off just by clicking on it again. And also we have the preview quality which of course controls the quality of the video preview. Now I'm assuming some of you guys don't have the top of the line graphics cards so for optimal viewing and for viewing your video project without any some sort of lag, uh, you might want to set it to preview and auto. The preview quality of the video won't be too good, but it won't look like that after you um, export your video. Next to the video preview, we have the audio level indicator, which obviously allows you to view the different levels of your audio. And last but not least, we have the main editing timeline. Now this is a place where you're going to organize all your footage and also, most people use this to directly edit their videos as well. Now there's around 4-5 to five different methods in importing your video into Sony Vegas. Uh, you can of course, like I explained in the previous section, use the Explorer tab to search your computer and just drag it onto the timeline. Or one of the main methods that I use is the simple drag and drop method. So you go ahead and find your file and you can drag in images, audio, or video files and you can either drag it into the project media tab, the media trimmer, or the main timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it onto the timeline and once you import any kind of video or audio, Sony will immediately begin building the sound waves and sound peaks for that specific file. Another way that I use to import my media files is the folder icon. So on the top left hand corner of the screen you should have a little folder icon that looks just like this. Go ahead and click that and this is just like the explorer tab. You go ahead and search your computer hard drive for the files that you want to use in your video projects. Now one thing to note when you're importing video or audio is that Sony will automatically begin building subfiles for that specific file. So when I imported part 2, which is a video in the timeline, uh, Sony created this subfile, which is an SFK file. And you're probably wondering what that is. 
So the SFK files are basically stored data of all the audio and sound waves that you see on the audio track right here. And it doesn't matter if you delete them. So if I delete this one right now, yes. And then I go back into Sony Vegas. Sony will re recreate those sound peaks and also recreate the SFK file. So remember, if you're working with large projects such as um, you know, a lot of videos included, you want to make sure that you put those videos inside a folder first and then import them into Sony Vegas because they'll create a lot of SFK files for all those videos. So finally, we're going to learn how to cut and trim our footage. So the first way is to use the media trimmer to uh, cut our footage. And to use that, we need to drop our footage from the project media bin directly onto the trimmer. And now you see that you have a full video playing on the screen right here instead of the video preview. So let's say I want to select this part and then end right around here. What I would do is go to the first part that I want to cut out and I want to set an endpoint. And this will automatically set these markers, these yellow markers, onto the first point. And if you really want to be accurate and precise with what you trim, you can use these two little buttons called previous and next frame to uh, play your video frame by frame to be accurate. And right around here, I'm going to go ahead and set the out point. And the video I want is this little section here compared to the rest of the video. So now that I got my two yellow markers set, I want to go ahead and select this little icon called Add to Timeline from Cursor A. And wherever you set your cursor on the main timeline, the video is going to appear there. So I'm going to go ahead and click this little icon. And the video I just cut out is now on the timeline. So that's one way to um, edit your video. Another way is to directly edit it on the timeline. So I'm going to go back to my project media bin, drop it onto the timeline, and now I have my full video on the timeline. And if you, uh, let's say you want to go frame by frame, and you want to take a really close look at what you're editing out, uh, you want to go ahead and select your video, and using your scroll button on your mouse, you want to scroll in, and this will basically uh, zoom in on your footage so that you can see the individual thumbnails of your video. Now to cut the video you want to go ahead and select the point that you want to cut and press S on your keyboard and that will slice the video. Another way you can edit is just by dragging uh, your video clip shorter or uh, longer. So if I got the end of the clip and let's say I want to end the video clip right around here, I always get the end of the video clip click and hold on it and drag it towards here and that's one way you can um, edit and trim your video clip. Now we're going to be learning how to fade in or fade out your video. Now fade ins are really useful for introducing your video or even providing a slow transition between two video clips. Now here I have my video clip and if you zoom in with your scroll button on your mouse you're going to notice that you have um, these little blue arrows on the top and bottom sides of the video clip. There are four of them on a single video clip. And if you hover your cursor over the top one on the left hand side of the video clip, you should get this little icon and it says fade in offset. If you click that and drag it over, you're going to create a fade offset. So let's go ahead and check out what this looks like. So as you can see, you're creating a fade out effect. Now to create a fade in effect, you go to the opposite side of the video clip or the right hand side and do the same process. Place your cursor on the top right hand corner or the arrow until you get this little icon. Click and hold it and drag it out. Now not only does this work for video, it also works for audio too. So here I have my audio. I can simply do that same thing for the audio. And as you can see, it provides a smooth transition for the audio as well. 
And you can also use this as a transition. So for another video clip, uh, make sure you fade it out. Put it right next to this other video clip. And as you can see, it provides a pretty good looking transition. Next up, we have transitions. And transitions provide a great way uh, for you to connect two videos together. So the first thing we should do for if we have a transition is have two video clips. So over here, I'm just going to get this video and press S on my keyboard, of course, to cut the videos. Now I have two videos. Now in order for a transition to be applied, uh, those two videos need to be conjoined together. So if you see here, you have little triangles on the top left hand and right hand corner of the two videos. And what you want to do is bring those two videos together. So get this video and place it right beside the first video clip. And you can tell if they're conjoined if they both form a single triangle like this one on top. Now we can finally add a transition. So we're going to go ahead and go into our transitions tab. And with this, they have several different presets for different transitions for each type of transition. And you want to get one, drag it, and bring it right onto the middle of the uh, two video clips, the part where they're conjoined together. So click and drag it and drop it on top. And a new window should pop up. Now let's go ahead and view the transition. Now depending on your computer for performance, uh, viewing the transitions might lag a little bit and to fix that, uh, we're going to do something called RAM Preview. So what this is, is that it allows you to render out a small section of your video project and it uses the RAM to render them out and you can view it without any some sort of lag um, for a temporary amount of time. So if you place your cursor above this little line on the timeline, uh, this icon should pop up. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag on it. And it should draw two yellow markers with a highlighted blue in between those two markers. So let's go ahead and place them around the transition we just made. And after that, you want to go ahead and press Shift plus B. And then it'll use your RAM to render out a small section of your video. Now remember, you can't do it for the entire video since uh, Sony Vegas only use a set amount of RAM for the actual RAM preview. So there's the transition. And if you want to edit the settings of the transition, what you go is go ahead and click on this little icon in the transition called Transition Properties. New window should pop up. And here you can change the different settings of the transition. And each transition has different settings applied to it. Now if you want to make the transition per se longer or shorter, uh, basically what transitions do is that they extend the video clips so that they cross fade with each other. So here it is and if you cross them over each other and overlap them uh, you're going to have the transition for a longer amount of time. So if you want a longer transition you want to increase the cross fade between the two video clips and vice versa if you want a shorter transition you just decrease the amount of crossfade time between those two video clips. Adding video effects is pretty simple. All you do is go to your video effects tab, select a plugin, and then select a preset, and click and drag it directly on top of a video clip. Now once you apply it, a new window should pop up. Here are some, some of the different settings for the actual video plugin. Now we're going to say if I wanted to view the differences between my original video clip and the video clip with the effects applied to it. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can use the video split screen view for that uh, specific situation if you want to see the comparison between the video effects and the original video clip. So by default, when you click on it, which is this little icon right here, you can see the original video clip on the left hand side and the uh, video clip with the video effects applied to it on the right side. Now you can change the position of where the original video clip goes and to um, see the final video just uncheck the icon and you should return to normal.
Now you might notice that you might have some lag when playing the video with the effects applied to it. All you do is the shift ram method, highlight it, press shift and B, and then you can now see your video without any lag. Now if you want a color correction for the entire video and you don't want to apply it to every single individual video clip, uh, what you can do is of course apply it to the um, entire project by getting the plugin and drag it directly onto the video preview. Now this will um, add the video effects and it will affect every single video on the timeline. And if you ever want to edit the video effect um, and since it's not directly applied to the video clip itself you want to go to this little icon on top of the video preview and this is how you edit the actual video effects. Now, uh, say if you want the effect to appear for only a couple of seconds and then the effect will fade and then it'll show the original video clip. So to do that, you're going to need to use keyframes. So what I'm going to do is apply this little color correction to my video clip. I'm going to go ahead and go into Event FX, which is located on the bottom right hand corner of the video clip. A new window should pop up. And you have a list of buttons called the animation buttons. And animation uses keyframes to actually animate the um, video effects in Sony Vegas. So let's say I want to change the color of the video. Uh, I would go ahead and press animate. And one option that you do need to enable for keyframing anything is, of course, the cursor. So over here, you should have Sync Cursor to Media Timeline. Uh, you should have that enabled because if you don't, if you move your cursor on the timeline of the video effect window, it's not going to move the same time along with the main cursor on the editing timeline. So once you enable it, it will automatically sync up with the cursor on the main timeline. Alright, so over here I'm going to go ahead and add a keyframe which is this little button right here. Go far ahead and I'm going to change the rotation hue and then that will automatically create a new keyframe. So this is an example of keyframing in Sony Vegas, which is really important in animation, especially in animating video effects. Adding text to your video is fairly simple. You go to your Media Generators tab, you go to Titles and Text, and you select any one of these plugins into your timeline. I'm going to select the default plugin and drag it onto my timeline, and a new window should pop up. Here you have your Video Media Generator Editor, and here you can also edit your text, and the other options for editing your text are included in useful drop-down menus. So I'm going to start with changing my text. I'm going to highlight this, delete it, and then type in my name. And if I want to change the font, you can't select the font. You need to highlight your text and then change the font. I'm going to change the size of it. And also, Sony has implemented a cool feature called animation, which automatically keyframes the animation for you um, so you don't have to manually keyframe the animating video effects to your text. So I'm going to select one of them called Bounce. Let's see how it works. And as you can see, the text animation is automatically keyframed. No manual keyframing is involved. Now if you want to edit your text again, you simply go to the bottom right hand corner of your video clip or your media generator. And there should be a little icon like this one right here. Go ahead and click that and you can open and edit your text using the Video Media Generator text editor. Now I'm going to talk about saving your project file. Saving your project in Sony Vegas does not mean that it's ready to upload to YouTube. Instead, it's supposed to allow you to edit your project at another time. So to save your project file, you're going to go to File, Save As, and it's usually best to save your file to the desktop. So I'm going to rename this Vegas Pro 12 Project and it's going to save it in a .veg file format. Click save. I'm going to exit this out. And here's what the Vegas Pro 12 project file is supposed to look like. Now you just double click on it. 
and then you can quickly resume what you have done so far from the last time you left off. So the last part of this video is going to cover how to render or export your video so that it's ready to upload to YouTube. Now the first thing you want to make sure is that your project video settings are um, similar to that of your footage that you're using to edit. And to check that, you want to go ahead and go into your project video settings, which is this little icon right here. Click it and a project video properties window should pop up. Now over here, if you go into template, Sony has provided a list of different video templates um, that contain resolutions and frame rates. Now to check the, um, now to make sure that your project video settings are same as your footage settings, you want to go to match media video settings, which is this little icon right here. And you want to go ahead and find the footage that you're using, select it and click open. And then your project video properties will automatically set themselves to the same video settings as your footage. Go ahead and click OK. And the next step is differentiating between your actual video that you want to render out and the excess footage. So let's say I want to re only render out this part, which is my final video edit. And the stuff over here are excess footage that I don't want included in the video. So to tell Sony or to tell the program that I want to render only these things out, um, I need to set a render region. And to do that, I need to place my cursor on this little horizontal area above the timeline. And your cursor should look like this once you do that. You want to go ahead and click and drag it along the horizontal line. And this will bring up these little yellow markers. Now these yellow markers are called render regions. You want to make sure that you put the other ends at the end of the video that you edited and the first one or the first marker at the beginning of the video that you just edited. Now once you set a render region, you want to go ahead and go to file, render as, and your render as window should pop up. Now in this guide, I'm not going to go too in depth on different render settings, so I'll just briefly explain to you how this works. So when you open this window up, you're going to have a list of file formats that Sony has provided for you to render out your video or audio in. Now the most compatible and reliable format I think you should render out your videos in is the Windows Media Video File Format or WMV. It's all the way at the bottom and you want to go ahead and uh, click on the drop down menu and Sony has also provided a list of different presets that you can render out your video in. Now you want to make sure that you kind of memorize the project video settings of your um, footage. So my footage is 1280 by 720 which is 720p so I would select one of these HD 720 um, presets and these little numbers called if you see here it says 24p um, that's the frame rate of the preset now the free frame rate of my project video settings is 30 I would select this one so once you select that you want to make sure that your render options is set to render loop region only which are the little markers we set telling the program that you want to only render this portion of the footage out. Name your file and as always save it to the desktop and hit render. Now depending on your computer hardware it might take a while to render out the video. So that's the end of this guide and I hope you guys liked it. Again I couldn't really go too in depth on some of the aspects of um, the program because I would make this tutorial too long so what I'm going to do is um, take those aspects and make individual tutorials on each one so that it's not all clumped together and if you have any questions about any part of this tutorial that you really don't get or you want more information on feel free to ask me down in the comments down below either I or someone else who knows how to use Sony Vegas will hopefully answer your question so Make sure you subscribe, like this video, and also comment on it, and I will see you guys next time.